knows what Windows is, or at least anyone who knows what a computer is. One of the leading operating systems of today is the famous Windows operating system. Yet, Windows wasn't made overnight. It went through a deep evolution of programming. Here's how it went. Believe it or not, there was a Windows version 1 that existed. Scary, huh? Well, this was it. This version had everything. Well, everything it needed at the time. Mainly a place to check files, run files, write documents, and even an early version of Paintbrush. Would you believe this sold for about a hundred bucks? Next in line came Windows version 2, later renamed 286 because of a later introduced Windows 386 that will not be shown in this presentation. Windows 286 basically took Windows to a new level, making it possible to view more than one window at a time. It still had, basically, the same features, not the most popular either. Now we come to Windows 3.1. Introduced in April 6 of 1992, this could be considered the landmark operating system of Windows' career, mainly because it paved the way for future Windows. Just like the earlier versions of Windows, Windows 3.1 ran applications and was the standard for work at the time. Say what you want, Macintosh fans, but Windows was it. However, the next step was both good and bad. On August 24th, 1995, the world-famous Windows 95 was released and sold a million copies in about a matter of four short days. This version ran more complex applications while keeping its DOS heritage intact. Yet, with the new improvements, look, and feel, Windows 95 also included something that most of us, if not all of us, dread to this day. That's right. Introducing the also world-famous Blue Screen Dead, also known as the BSOD. Anytime an error ever occurred in Windows' kernel, or programming basically, the system would give an error such as this one. Even though this one gave the option to return to Windows to help fix the error, it usually never worked. Control alt delete became real famous at this point. Windows 98, released later on in June 25th of 1998, didn't sell as wildly as Windows 95, but it did add some great features, such as the FAT32 file system, unlike Windows 95's FAT16 system, and improved plug-and-play support. However, the BSOD did not improve, nor help it much. Many people say Windows 98's second edition was much better. Backtracking to August 24, 1996, the release of Windows NT 4.0. Mainly designed for professional users and technicians, Windows NT was strong. It used its own file system of NTFS instead of FAT16 or 32. However, again, the BSOD didn't disappear. It only became more complicated. To see a demonstration of this type of BSOD, use any computer lab within any high school in the immediate Wallingford School District. Now, the year 2000 came along, and Microsoft released Windows NT 5.0. However, since that title would have absolutely no surefire way of selling, they changed the name to be Windows 2000. Very stable, very reliable, online updates, and didn't crash as much. Note, that was didn't crash as much. It still had its crashes. Its BSOD, not shown, is mainly a shorter version of the Windows NT BSOD. Yet, Windows 2000 had its trouble points, so Windows Millennium Edition was released for the home user with little computer experience. Basically, it was an upgrade of Windows 95 and 98. It had some additional features and fixes, such as the rollback feature, protection of files, Windows Media Player, and the same blue screen. After through all that, Microsoft finally did something right for once. October 25, 2001 marked the release of Microsoft's Whistler codenamed operating system, Windows Experienced, or Windows XP. This came out in two versions, XP Home Edition and XP Professional Edition. Running mainly anything that comes to it, it's one of the best versions of Windows yet. Backwards compatibility, usage of all file formats, Internet Explorer 6, everything's near. Plus, the best thing, it also has a BSOD, but you really need to screw up the machine to see one of those, hence no picture available. It's strong, but easy for just about anyone to use. So that's basically it. Sure, there are a few other versions of Windows left, but they're not the biggest ones. So as Windows keeps evolving, such like the upcoming project codenamed Longhorn, Microsoft will keep surprising us and will do their best to crash our systems less and less and take our money more and more.